Hey everyone, and welcome to 1.21 Gigawatts. I am Peter, that's Matt. Hey, what's going on? We, of course, talk about movies here on this show, and this episode we're going to talk about Hell or High Water, which is not brand new, it's a few months old, but we finally both get a chance to check it out, because it wasn't playing near either of us, or we missed it at the time. I can't oh. remember the exact reason why we didn't see it when it came out, but we, you know, clearing up some 2016 must-sees. Yep. The cat strikes again. But yeah, so this was one that, as Pete just said, was fell through the cracks, but not by our own choice. Like, as soon as it came out, we were here in positive buzz. And, you know, so once it got released for home, uh, I, at least I was excited. I... This, is, this is one I definitely, since we talked about the trailer, back when we used to do full-on podcasts where we discussed trailers and news, I remember watching this trailer, like, in the early part of the year. Yeah, I remember seeing the trailer. I wasn't, like, super pumped for it. It was kind of one of these things where the buzz was definitely making me interested. But I wasn't, yeah. like, you know, the premise itself wasn't, like, super, oh, man, I need to see this. Like, you know, it, was, yeah. it I like the cast, obviously. Jeff Bridges mm-hmm. is very dependable. I always like him. Yes. So we'll start spoiler-free, as we usually do. And we'll give you a warning before we go into spoilers halfway through. So the premise of this movie is essentially that Chris Pine and Ben Foster play a pair of brothers who are robbing banks, but they're not doing, like, full bank jobs in the sense where they're going in and getting into the safe and taking, you know, walking away with hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. They are only robbing the the cash registers. They are taking small notes because they don't want it to be traced. They're not looking for big amounts, but they're hitting multiple banks because they are trying to raise a specific amount of money, which is revealed what the money's for as the movie goes on. Yeah. uh, and you get a sense that, you know, Ben Foster's character is more of a criminal, whereas Chris Pine is, you know, he doesn't want to hurt anyone, you know, you get this sort of, sort of dynamic between them. And then the other flip mm-hmm. side of the movie is that we see Jeff Bridges' character, who is the, is he a marshal or a ranger? I can't remember the exact... Uh, I think they're interchangeable, but okay. he has the ranger, he has the ranger badge on, but, so because they're they're stealing such low number of money per bank... It doesn't fall into the FBI because it's not a federal offense. So it falls to the state of Texas. And so they send Bridges after. And he's close to retirement. Like they say that early on. He's just two days from retirement. Yep. And so this is like his last job. And he wants to get these guys. So, um, but yeah, what I really noticed here is it really is a modern Western. Like, from the cowboys, who, like, the bank robber brothers, they they really are that outlaw type that we're used to seeing in a Western. And then you have the two lawmen who share the story that, that's coming down. And there's even stuff, you know, not just the bank robberies, but, like, card games. Like, casinos play, in, play a part, you know. So I felt, felt like it hit that Western spot better than most I've seen in recent years. Hmm, it's funny, because I, I don't even know if I would uh, think of it as a Western. Really? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's set in Texas, and obviously it's got the kind of set, and it, it's got certainly some sort of overtones of that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. but it really, to me, didn't feel like... To me, to me, a Western, you have like a hero, you have a villain, and I don't feel like here that, that was the case. This was more Shades of Grey, this was, you know... Chris Pine's character is very sympathetic, for the most part. You know, yeah. You know, Ben Foster's more of the wild card, and I'm not. I'm not saying there isn't any Western sort of tones, but t- to me, no, yeah, but t- to me, it is more of a just a straight up sort of drama. With obviously some thriller elements, there there is some tension. Yeah. Certainly, when we get to the uh, the third bank rob, not third, sorry, the fourth bank robbery, yeah. is uh, you know it gets very tense when they realise they're in over their head. You know, and there's mm-hmm. build up to it, and you know your heart kind of sinks when they walk into the bank, and we'll talk about that in spoilers why. You know, it is that way, but yeah, like so. There was the tension for me. This was more of a, a character study. It was also there's a lot of themes about uh, money and sort of there's a lot of dialogue about um, like Native Americans being you know their land being taken and how the banks yeah. kind of doing that to regular people now and oh. just themes of how taking land in any capacity usually results in bloodshed, whether it's literal or metaphorical 
and right. there's a lot of that running throughout the movie and you know are these brothers just essentially doing what people have already done in the past it's just now it's illegal now it's you know is, is this repetition of history is history playing out again yeah. and for me there was a lot of that and the character study f- for me from both sides because obviously we see a lot of Jeff Bridges character we see a lot of Chris right. they're, they're the other two main characters essentially and then Jeff yeah. Bridges partner Alberto and Ben Foster's character are like the, the companions to these main characters to aid their their characters journeys and what they they come to realise and uh, their, their entire philosophy is just kind of shaken up as the movie goes on and yeah. what they go through so that, that, that to me that's... to me it was a character study i guess is what i'm really getting well, yeah and and that's why i also pick up on the western themes too because it's about brotherhood and not just bloodline but you know because you get the camaraderie between uh jeff bridges and his partner and then you get the the brothers who you know they're supporting each other but kind of as the story goes on one gets a little more desperate than the other and starts, you know, making these mistakes that weren't, you know, factored in later. So it's like, well, yeah, he's my brother, but where, you know, how long do I have to, I have to keep putting up with this? So that's... I, I don't know if I'd say desperate's the right word, and I, I can't talk about it until we get to spoilers. So yeah, gonna... well, that's why I that's why I used that word because I, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't think desperate's the right word, but we'll talk talk about that when we actually okay. get to spoilers. Uh, so keep, keeping it spoiler free uh, in terms of quality here. I think obviously the acting is a big deal in this movie. That's why it's elevated that, and the direction as well. The direction is mostly pretty good, yeah. uh, but I think the acting is more than anything else what sets this movie apart. Yeah. Personally, there was probably one too many uh, country songs in the soundtrack for me. <laughs> yeah, well, but that's just a taste I like, thing. We'll see. Yeah, I like that they were more old school country and not the modern, you know, super poppy country. Cause I thought it really drove home the setting well, in it, West Texas. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work with the movie anyway, because the, the whole idea, especially with Jeff Bridges character, he's old, he's an yeah. old timer. And even yeah. though Chris Pine and his brother aren't, you know, they're more middle aged, but what they're going through and the themes of the movie are all, it's all about dating back. Yeah. It's all about looking back to the past, to the history of this, yeah. this land. But, but that's why I wanted to point out, cause they are, newer songs it's not like yeah johnny cash pops up a couple times but these are like modern songs that sound like old songs so kind of like what you were saying about the movie about how it's it's modern or it's classic themes in a modern setting yeah i felt like the soundtrack drove that home and i and i really enjoyed it and i'm not a huge country music fan but i thought it added like a little bit of spice to that extra like if this is a meal it added just a little bit extra to it I, mean, I appreciated that i'm not completely i thought the score was quite good there was a c- couple of really yeah. great moments where the sort of piano theme plays in uh, mm-hmm. and you feel the emotion of the characters you feel the relationship of both the brothers and jeff bridges and alberto although i actually out of the two i actually liked the jeff bridges alberto relationship much more yeah. I, I i felt like I, that felt more layered to me because it wasn't like i almost get a little bit critical and maybe this is because i'm an only child and i don't have any okay. siblings right but I always get a little bit critical in movies and TV when characters are just like, well, no, because they're family. So, of course, I'm going to always stand. But like, no, what are you talking about? If, you're, if your brother's well, an idiot, if your parent's an idiot, call them out on it. I, don't, I just don't get that thinking. It's just me. Yeah. It's, well, it's a loyalty thing. And that's what whole, like, like the mob code in movies is all based off of that. Right? Yeah, I, I don't get that thinking at all. It me, and neither do I. Here, though, and that, that's what I was trying to say about the Brotherhood theme, is you feel like because Alberto and Jeff Bridges are tied together by their job and the duty of that job, Hell, even they that, almost have uh, a stronger bond than the actual Blood Brothers. I would simplify it beyond doing. that. I would simplify it beyond that. I would say that simply they're just bound by circumstance. Like, that life just okay. threw them together. They, they, they didn't, you know... Right. They both ended up together, but they have formed a bond, and they have a different kind of bond, yeah. and the brothers do. Yeah. Where you almost feel like these two guys, if they weren't brothers, would probably never be friends. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose yeah. similar, I mean, maybe uh, Jeff Bridges and Alberto, maybe they would never be friends either if they didn't end up right. working together, but it's a different kind of relationship. It's, you know, it's... You know, I, I think it's more interesting, because, you know, they make fun of each other, you know, um, yeah. throughout the movie, and it. I mean, that's another thing about the movies. It's actually occasionally very funny. 
it's, it's not a comedy yeah. by any means, but there's a few yeah. key moments throughout it that where it's laugh out loud funny. Yeah, um, they throw some levity in there, and not that it's a dark movie, but it helps break some of the, the. See, I don't want to say dark because it's not dark, but some of the more serious elements of the movie get broken up with these comedies or comedy bits. So, uh, more so on on bridges than on anyone else because. On you know. Bridges, although I felt like Foster had a couple of good, really like reaction moments, mm-hmm. where he would react to something in a really goofy way that did kind of break the the tension of whatever was going on yeah. in the scene or the the awkwardness of whatever was going on, and I, I think mm-hmm. that worked quite well to uh, break things up. Otherwise, though, um, I, I think the the story is very good. I think there's some proper good gut punches at the end of the movie, uh, mm-hmm. which hit quite hard, and it's a very contemplative movie I guess is what I'll say about yeah. the ending and I, I think it's a very satisfying watch in that sense um, when it comes to award season should this be considered for things uh, probably I, I think certainly some acting uh, I would say be, acting I would say uh, even the story because the story is pretty tight like um, it, does, it doesn't I'd waste like any time get some consideration what's that it doesn't waste any time it's very tight it's, no. like you say it's tight it's very well constructed Mm-hmm. doesn't so, waffle doesn't waffle around no and it's you know the story from the get go like it's not needlessly elaborate it's not you know once once it starts getting into some twists and turns like you were talking about with the tension elements it's very easy to follow you know like and I think that that also adds to what makes the script so good you know yeah so but yeah, uh, I definitely think those are the two ones. Like, the, like you said, the direction, the direction's fine, but I don't think it stands out. It, but I do think I, the I, story and the acting do. I think the direction has some great moments, but it's maybe not consistently like blowing me away kind of thing. But it's, it's definitely solid. Like, there's nothing wrong with it, but certainly. Yeah. Um. But no, I I, I would definitely recommend it. It's very very good. Yes. So I think we're going to go into some spoilers now. So just to wrap up spoiler free town, mm-hmm. it's uh, well worth your time. And uh, yeah, I certainly would recommend checking it out. So, spoilers, full spoilers from this point on for Hell or High War. Yep. We're we're beyond the state line of non-spoilers. Yes, to keep the theme of the movie. Yes. So I don't think we actually have to talk about the plot so much. Like I, I don't think there's much to say on the stealing back from the banks thing to pay off his like you know the the reverse no, mortgage for like, his kids. Yeah, I like that though. I like that they're stealing from the bank. That's foreclosing on. The oh property. yeah, it, it, it's 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 like, fun, but I don't think there's. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think it's. Uh, we don't have to go into the the the, the nitty gritty details of. No, the no, plot no, no. But I sense. like that. And I like that, and that's why they're selecting the banks that they are, and why they're taking the amount that they are. Well, yeah, it, it plays into how Jeff Bridges sort of predicts where they're going to go. But for yeah. for me, like I say, the actual. The, pl- the plot is the least interesting part of the movie in the sense that, for me, it's the characters and why they're doing what yeah. they're doing rather than what they're doing, if that makes any sense. And I... No, it does. It does. Um, but yeah, like, Chris Pine's character, he... I like when he gets to play this calm and cool kind of guy. You know, like, every other time I really see him, he's always playing up the bravado type, like Captain Kirk. So here, where he gets to kind of be the the cool guy, the the straight man, to Ben Foster's more manic. I like that. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a big part of the movie, and, but even he has like this edge to him because there's, there's the scene in the the gas station where Ben Foster like just stares at this other guy in a car, this thug, and yeah. the guy pulls out a gun as if he's going to start something. And Chris yeah. Pine just jumps in from the side and beats the everlasting crap out of the guy, yeah. and it and you feel every yeah. hit. It's really really brutal. Mm-hmm. And then as they're driving away, Ben Ben Foster cracks a joke, you know, and it's yeah. and it's almost an uncomfortable joke. Like what we've just witnessed is like someone going over the line, and it's why when we see Chris Pine talking to his son later on, and he's saying, yeah. "Oh, believe everything they say. Be better than I am. Like I want you to be better than I am." Like. It sells the idea that he is not necessarily a good person. He's maybe better than his brother. He's maybe more intelligent than his brother. But he's yeah. he's not squeaky clean. He's not innocent by any means. Right. So. Right. And yeah, but, and the, I think that's the joke where he says, "Is that the one that gets set up where you get me a Dr Pepper?" And yeah, where he says about the Mister Pib. It was that and uh, 
the, the, the ten of me line was what breaks that. Oh, up. okay, that's right. Okay, because I, I know those were around the same part, but I couldn't remember which. But yeah, man, Ben Foster. I remember watching him on a on an ABC show called Flash Forward with Joel State. I don't know if you ever watched that. Oh yeah, it was garbage. Yeah, and if you would have told me he'd be acting this caliber, you know, like twenty years later, I don't know if I would have believed you. Wait, twenty years so, later? Yeah, that show was like in the late nineties. Wait, we're thinking of different shows. There was a show called Flash Forward like six years ago. Yeah. Somewhere. yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, no. There was a kids show on ABC. All right, okay. more more geared towards kids. Right, okay, I think it started in prime time. Ended up on like morning, whatever. No, no, no. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, of, was... I'm, I'm thinking of the Lost uh, Knockoff from like six, seven years ago. Okay. Yeah, no, not that one. This one with Ben Foster, Jill State from Firefly, and uh, what else was she she been in? Anyways, but uh, but yeah, he was just this kid actor, and next time I see him pop up was like in Bruce Willis's Hostage movie. And he was a completely different person, so I like I like seeing an actor that takes roles like these, and he's been doing stuff like this for a while. I think he was in Three Ten to Yuma, as well. Yeah, so. I've seen him pop up in various places. Uh, for me, for me, the, the, his like bond with his brothers. I, I, I mean, do, as much as I prefer the other relationship, I still think there's layers yeah. to this one. Uh, the idea that yeah. when they go into this bank at the end, that he convinces. Chris Pine to go in, even though he's saying it's too big. As soon as they walk in and it's yeah. full of people, because the whole thing is like, throughout the movie is every time they've hit a bank, it's been at the time of day when there's no one there. There's like one person working, you working, know, yeah. you know, really really quiet. But they they walk in like all the cashiers are all full uh, of you know employees. The you know there's, there's security. There's, there's a queue. Like, there's the queues of people. Yeah. Uh, you know all of the cashiers, yeah. and. As soon as they walk in, you feel the, the oh crap, this is going down, and then Ben Foster ends up murdering two people. He ends up shooting the security guard and then one random person yeah. who tried to pull a gun on them. And because of course they're in Texas and everybody's carrying yeah. a gun, they even make a joke on that early in the movie. Yeah, well, obviously when they they go out and like there's just random civilians who follow them, like those civilians wanting like justice. You know, not, there's not even yep. the police at this point, and they're chasing him on the yep. highway. And Ben Foster, you know, pulls over and he pulls out his assault rifle and starts spraying into the crowd and. Then, then he has this plan to let his brother go, and he like snipes the cops, you know, up from this mm. valley. And all of this feels like he he kind of planned this. Whereas, like, like there's no way we're not going to get caught in some capacity. So it's almost like he knows he's sacrificing himself yeah. so that his brothers and his brother's kids can have the future. Because maybe well, he he realizes he doesn't have this. Well, yeah, but it's also each each time they go into a bank, he gets more reckless. It's almost like he can't control himself. Well, it does, but I, I think he's aware of it. Like I think at this point in the movie, he's. Yeah. Aware, I I think he goes into that bank knowing that he's not ending this day alive. Yeah, I just, and this does nothing on the movie. It's just kind of on the plan. Like, I don't know. I don't know if that was again. He's not the brightest tool, right? You know, like being called. Well, stupid. no, no. It, it's not. It's yeah. not. It's not about him being like brighter in, in that scene. I think for me, it's just he's yeah. already decided that he's not getting out of this. Because they even have that conversation yeah. in the middle of the movie, where they both agree that there's no way they're not getting caught. I think this is his way of like the reason why he convinces them to because they have a choice of two banks, and he convinces right. Chris Pine to travel to this one because they'll get there quicker and whatever, and he convinces him to go right. in. But I think he does all this. And because he even has the the you know the gas canister to blow up the car ready, he has you know his mm-hmm. sniper. Like it's almost like he's he's going. Maybe he's, it's not like a dead set plan where he's like convinced it's going okay. to happen today. But I think it's, he's he's prepared that so that when this goes down, he can get his brother out of it and he can go out in a blaze of glory. Glory. But yes. it's not like a heroic thing because of course the offshoot no. of this is that he kills Alberto, who we have spent yeah. the entire movie caring about and building a bond with Jeff Bridges and they talk about retirement, he talks about finally getting out of the job and he'll be lucky if he gets yeah. to the end of it and all that. Yeah, that's the tragedy that we talk about. Jeff Bridges is two days from retirement, right? Yeah, and, and that's a running joke and, in Hollywood that when a cop's two days yeah. from retirement is when they get killed, but here they flip and it, it and it's his partner that gets killed. Yeah, and it's just their conversation in the hotel room and just, you feel like Again, the brotherhood bond here that they're busting each other's balls. 
Yeah. And they're talking about the TV preacher. And you really get to like these two characters. Yeah, because Jeff Bridges, and, even at one point, like I thought, is he being really racist? Because he keeps making these yeah. Mexican jokes. And then yeah. he's like, you know, I'm half... In, or he makes, keeps making these Native American jokes. He keeps making Indian yeah. jokes. And he's like, you know, I'm half Mexican as well. When are you going to start joking about that? And he's like, when I run out of Indian jokes, which, by the way, will be a while. And, you know, yeah. like, you get a sense that there's this banter that goes back and forth. And eventually, yeah. he starts firing back with the banter. And... See when he gets shot though. When he gets shot and Jeff Bridges doesn't even realise it, like it happens outside of his peripheral vision, and he turns around yep. and sees it, and the way he reacts, it's heartbreaking. It is easily the most heartbreaking moment in the movie. Yes, it is, and yeah, oh man, yeah, that was that was tough for me to watch because Bridges is such a good actor. Oh, I would say he's great that he sells that entire scene. So. Yeah. But it works, though, because the entire movie, it's been building this relationship. And it's not a relationship yeah. where they're constantly, like... You know, a lesser movie would have them have a speech in the middle where they talk about their bond and how much they love each other. Or yeah. or they'd have that kind of no, thing. But you get, you the, get it. The entire relationship yeah. comes from them being awful to each other, but there's a wink yeah. and a smile the entire time, yeah. and you feel that bond. Even, even when they go to the, uh, the diner where the, diner. The, the, the awful waitress who only serves T-bone steak... You're like yeah, just just the looks at each other throughout that scene is like is, she, is that's this that's exactly what real? I was gonna bring up. Yeah, was there how they react to that uh, during like each? That's why I said the script so tight. Each reaction gets deeper, not reaction. Each conversation gets them deeper in in that bond greater. So when Alberto is taken away in this way, it it's heartbreaking for everybody, and then it forces Bridges to to. You know he's got to end this now. You know, like there's there's only one way. So he's kind of like uh, Ben Foster's character. Is there's, there's only one way out of this. Yeah. And he's got to he's got to take him out. But going back to them though, like just the, the 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 bickering, and there's little moments of like nicety when he brings them the coffee in the morning when he's falling asleep because he's staking out the bank across the road, or yeah. Or even when he's trying to like tell him, or he's trying to explain to Alberto the plan, and he's he's got a map out, and he's like, "Oh, they've not hit this bank." He's like, "Yeah, that one's shut," and he keeps interrupting him. He's like, "Will you just let me finish?" Like, but there's that other line of dialogue in the conversation when they're talking about retirement, and Jeff Bridges says, "The thing you'll miss most about me in a year is me raiding you hard, is me making fun of you," and yeah. that's why it hits. It, it just hits extra hard when he does go down because that's the things you're going to miss. It's the things. It's all these yeah. things that you think are annoying, but they're not. And it just is. In terms of a character piece, this movie's damn near flawless. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, no, on on that, I can't. Uh, I can't fault it. So. And and any time Bridges is doing a southern accent, I'm down. Even in something dumb like R.I.P.D., I saw that trailer and I was like, "Oh, Jeff Bridges southern accent." Part of me wants to watch this. You know. Nah, no part of me wanted to watch that movie, but to yeah. each their own. Well, cause- you're, no, you're, you're smarter than me. Please. Come on, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I still need to see like Crazy Heart because I hear Bridges is is great in that. He's good. Do you know what? Not. Yeah, he's definitely the best part of that movie. I think the problem with that movie is, is it's the exact same plot as the wrestler, but with a country singer. Yeah. <laughs> so so he ends the movie climbing the top rope with his guitar. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, nah, the ending's a little bit different, but it's the okay. same thing. It's a washed up star who's you know, yeah. messed up, and when just when he's trying to connect to his family, he ends up, you know, doing something stupid to mess it up. You know, it's the exact same kind of thing. Gotcha. But yeah, but I can just, I hear his voice, and I just, I like it, you know. And he brings, he brings that extra level, I think, to everything he does. So, he's, he's, a, he's an American treasure, if you ask me. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's kind of this... Obviously, the final scene, you know, uh, Jeff Bridges after retirement goes out to visit uh, Chris Pine on his, you know, ranch, which is now, you know, pumping for oil, which is, you know, part of the reason why he was fighting so much for it is because if they get to keep it, they can start reaping the rewards of the oil, and that's why well, he and, wants. And he knows that, right? Because he was working yeah. for like a drilling company. Yeah, he he knows yeah. that. Yeah, uh, that, this is all part so, of the plan. It's it's not just that he wants the ranch for his sons because right. it will give them a home. It's because no, this will set them up forever for the future like they'd yeah. never have to worry about money again and it, it's kind of almost a running theme of the movie as well that money in and of itself is kind of like an evil entity because that's what they're fi- like his goal here is to never have to worry about it again yeah you know so if he can take them from 
poverty to even middle. Because it is, it's touched upon throughout the movie. You know, the waitress who uh, doesn't want to give the two hundred dollars back because it's her tip, even though yep. it's technically police evidence. Or in the casino when the prostitutes try to like chat up Chris Pine because she sees he's got the big stack of chips. Like money's a constant theme; it's constantly been brought back up yeah. throughout the movie. Yeah, and I love in that scene too. Not to I digress, but when Ben Foster finds her working the brother and he jumps into protective older brother mode, yeah. I think that's another one of his shining moments because he turns it up. Although quick, I'm pretty sure when they wrote that scene, they did not predict uh, something that. Uh, a certain politician might have said in a recording uh, many years ago. Yeah, because of course. Because it, it, it made me think of that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But just the fact that he he jumps from having this card game against a Native American, and they have that whole deal about what a Comanche is, and, and he comes in kind of on a high and sees this girl trying to take advantage of his brother and just cranks it. And any time an actor can elevate that level, I think is is fun to watch at least. So, because I to tell you the truth, I can't remember what he said. I just got caught up in the emotion of it. So, you know, yeah. I fully buy what you just said, but I don't remember it happening. So. Oh yeah, he says he wants to sample the goods, and he shoves he shoves one of the chips uh, somewhere. Because oh, even man. in the next shot, you even kind of see her go to pull it out. It's Oh man! Oh, this is definitely in line for a rewatch. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that. But yeah, the, so the endings: uh, Jeff Bridges and Chris Pine, and it's like you know, Chris Pine's got his gun out, but they have this sort of talk where they kind of understand each other, you know, or they're trying to understand each other. And Jeff Bridges mm-hmm. like kind of gets it, and it's it's all like Chris Pine, you know, because one of the big plot points in the movie about at least suspecting him as being a part of the bank robberies is that he's never had a criminal record. He's never done anything like this before. Yeah. But he, 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 and the, the other cop rep says, you don't just start with bank robbery. You, you graduate. So you start with smaller right. things and you build your way up. It's kind of funny how crime's almost like actually working a job, isn't it? Where he starts low and yeah. rank well, your you, way up. You start figuring out how much you can get away with yeah. and then you start you escalate. towing that line and escalation. and Yeah. But... You know, like so that's a that's a big thing that's mentioned in the movie, and you know Jeff Bridges is aware of that that he doesn't really fit the profile, but he still thinks it's him, and he, he oh. still it's, it's not even that he thinks he knows. Like he doesn't even accuse him; he just sits there and talks about it as if no, you did this, yeah. you this is why you did this, and he sees why he did it for his family, and he sees the the kids, and there's a level of understanding that this is just kind of the way of the world, and that this is part of the cyclical nature of things. Even though, you know, Jeff Bridges killed his brother. But he's not like because he even says that line where I'll meet up mm-hmm. with you. You know, I, I'm living in town in this apartment. If you want to finish yeah. this conversation, I'll be there. There's like, this weird yeah. level of respect, even though, yeah, you know, both of them have just lost someone in this fight. They've well, both yeah. had they a have huge... a very parallel story. Yeah, even if they're going in opposite directions. Yeah, you know, because one guy is basically starting his his life or his professional life. The other one's ending it. And they're almost crossing each other like an X. And at this point, that's where they have the respect. And because, I mean, Jeff Bridges is retired. The case is closed. Like, they did such a, a good job at, at handling the sale of the house and whatnot with the bank that it's almost airtight. And Bridges even, you know, points out on that right before he goes out there. Yeah, because that's uh, one of the things is that his brother's not smart enough to come up with this way of making the money yeah. legit you know, by putting it through a casino and then cashing it back out. It, yeah, you know, it, it turns it into like money that, um, as far as the bank's it's been concerned, laundered. yeah, so yeah, it's been laundered yeah. essentially. Yeah, uh, yeah so. but it's and that's that's another reason why it's just the smaller amounts from the the cashiers. It's not yeah. the the money from the 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 vaults. It's Huge. smaller bills, you know. Because yeah, obviously, yeah. if you go to a casino and you hand them like, lots of like hundreds of dollars of bills or whatever, or higher denominations, they're going to question, yeah. why do yeah. you have this in cash? Where did it come from? Well, there's that because they don't want to have their business pulled down because of you. Yeah. So, yeah. and But yeah, so the whole thing, that ending where he says, and, and even though Chris Pine is, is standing there with his rifle, being like, you know, trespassing laws, I could shoot you where you stand, you know. There's like this uneasiness to everything, but is that all? Uh, one one uh, slight correction there. It's actually Jeff Bridges that mentions that law. Oh, that's right. 
Here it's, it's, him, it's, it's him that points out that you would be in your lawful right to shoot me right now. Right. You know, which right. is almost a sign of like, I'm not here to fight you. I'm not here to shoot you. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm here for a conversation. Just here and to talk. And here Chris Pine even offers him a beer. And yeah. Well, they sit on the porch, right? Like, yeah. Jeff Bridges is sitting there on the porch and that's when his family been, pulls up. And that's when he's been talking about the whole movie, that he's avoiding the porch. Yeah. You know, Alberto keeps yeah. saying you're avoiding sitting on that porch with nothing to do because yeah. you're scared of retirement, and yeah. End of the movie, he's retired, sitting on a porch that's not his, piecing together, you know. He's still kind of working, you know, but not in any real capacity. It, it's more for his, it's, it's for his own it's personal for his own understanding. Good. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's nothing to do with putting someone away. Exactly. Because he even so. says to him that this will haunt you for the rest. Because, you know, his brother in doing and getting away with this, they killed two people. Not maybe not him personally, but that's on his head. But he's yeah. He his hands are dirty. Yeah. yeah, and he has to live with that. He's, and that's what Jeff Bridges points out to him is that you. This is going to live with you for the rest of your life, and mm-hmm. you know. So, it's about what you yeah. can live with. So, no, yeah. uh, good movie. Good, good character-based movie. And yeah, all, all the bank stuff's fine, and you know it's yeah, it's airtight plan and all the rest of it. And I'm I'm sure someone if like I'm sure if you fact check things, maybe they're still handing in too much money to because you know I'm sure you can nitpick certain parts of it with uh yeah, but that's stuff. again there's that saying if they're paying attention to that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, I yeah. never once thought of that small stuff. Oh yeah, I know, but like there's always some yeah. cynical asshole who's going to be like, oh no, but this doesn't work because this wouldn't do that, and like, no, no, for the purpose of the movie, they get things right enough. Yeah, exactly, and yeah, what you just said, I can't add anything else to it. Yeah. It's right enough. Yeah, and you're along for the ride, and it's it really is one of the best movies I've seen this year. Uh, I wish I would have seen it in the theater. Instead of sitting at home, yeah, where there my, are distractions, you know? Honestly, my only real... It's not even a criticism. My only real observation of things being different than I expected was that... Mm. So they have the two f- quick sort of bank heists at the start, which sort of draws you... Which, by the way, I love that it it doesn't... like. Some other movies might have had half an hour of build-up to Chris Pine deciding he's going to do this. Whereas this just yeah. stops you, drops you right in. He's doing the first thing, yep. and it builds you in from there. And I like that. But it, it, it drops you in with these first two that they do in the same morning, back to back. And then you have that one sort of impromptu one that Ben Foster does himself, you know. Across uh, the street from the diner. Yeah, and, which is kind of what leads to them getting caught, uh, really, because yeah. it's what sets Jeff Bridges on the path. But yep. then the, the, then there's only one more. Like, it builds up to this fourth one, and that's when they get caught. It doesn't, you know... I, I was kind of half expecting them to like do like another five throughout the movie before they get to the yeah. one where Jeff Bridges finally catches up to them. But that's more of a Hollywood thing. That's more of a Hollywood chase thing. And it's not really an action movie. It's not that. No. So, yeah. Uh, really good. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Definitely. That. If you've made it this far or you fast forwarded through the, you know, spoiler section, however you choose to watch this, listen to it. Um, do, do go see it. Check it out. It's on... You know, everywhere. I got it from the Red Box because we don't have video stores anymore. And no one does. I saw it on iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've, I've heard, like, some places still. Okay, have, okay. Like, when I say no one, I don't mean literally there's none, but, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. the vast majority like, of people do not have a video yeah. store at their disposal anymore. That used to be so good. It's not the same as you're going through looking for something to watch on, you know, Netflix. Yeah. It doesn't have that same thing of going to the store it's not the same but yeah but no you can you can find this anywhere and everywhere right now so if you want to watch it it's you know it's not like some of the other things that we've covered where you had to look a little harder because it is a smaller thing or wait for it on netflix um but yeah so do do watch it let us know what you think yeah so that's hella high water let us know what you think indeed in the comments below of the movie uh like and subscribe and all that stuff it helps us out a lot of course we are in December, so we will soon have a Christmas movie special of some sorts. Uh, we'll talk about our favourite Christmas movies, make some recommendations and that yeah. kind of thing. And, of course, the week after that is Star Wars, Rogue One. Uh, so, that's pro- that's the next big movie. Of, the year. of course. Yeah. Uh, and then, right after Christmas, we'll have Passengers uh, reviewed as well. So, that's what's coming up in the next few weeks in terms of 1.21. January is looking to be very quiet, so we might get a bit creative in January and do some uh, maybe some other 2016 movies we, we missed. Quiet, Pete. There. Monster Trucks comes out in January. Yeah, Aren't you excited? I, I think people would debate if that's something <laughs> that's uh, not quiet. True. 
I al- I also think even if we count that, that's the only one. The rest of January is completely blank. So, so uh, yeah, we may go back and look at some other 2016 movies we missed. Yeah. Um, if I can force Matt to watch the the Handmaiden, which I'd watched this week and was utterly mesmerised by, it. it was a fantastic film. I thoroughly recommend it. It's a Korean movie, Park Chan Wook. Another great film from him. I recommend it. Yeah, last time I watched one of his, he did Old Boy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't right for like two months, so I'm okay. <laughs> That this, movie's still messing with this me. This isn't as weird as Old Boy, though. Oh, no, not that as weird. He's such a good yeah. emotional storyteller. I can't think of Old Boy without going, eh, you know? So I, just I everything say, in that movie. Although I will say this. If you're going to watch The Handmaiden on my recommendation, do not watch yeah. it with your parents. That is the only thing I'm going to say. <laughs> you will feel awkward. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> just, just warning. But yeah. Warning. You, you might have to pull Connor in for that one. Yeah, hi, yeah. highly uh, erotic in places is all I'll say. But uh, yeah, so that's... Well, that's The Handmaiden, but this has been Hell or High Water review. So yes. thank you very much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. It helps us out a lot if you do. Check out the other stuff we do here on the channel. Of course, uh, me and Tim over on Screams After Midnight talk about horror movies every week. So check that stuff out. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.